Hello, welcome along to Racing to Win. This is Hong Kong's twice weekly preview show, midweek edition. That normally means, as it is today, that we preview Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Nine race program coming up, joined on the panel today by Paul Lally and Nick Child. And Nick, we finish off with a very strong back half of the card. Yeah, we certainly do, Mark. Looking forward to it as well. And um, plenty of quality and plenty of untapped uh, potential as far as Hong Kong racing is concerned as well. Really looking forward to race eight. There's a newcomer from uh, Europe by the name of Atomic Force who uh, is very smart in his form over there. So really looking forward to seeing how he performs first time up here in Hong Kong. He'll take on a winner method, nervous witness and last start winner, the runner amongst others, including Special M from a good draw this week as well. And Paul Lally joins us too and you've got a jackpot for us, Paul. Yeah, we have a triple trio jackpot of 1.8 million. So that should get up to 5 million for the uh, triple trio. As Nick said, there's uh, a lot of first starters actually throughout the card as well. Some have raced overseas, some haven't. So always good to see those first starters here in Hong Kong. It sure is. We saw a first starter last Wednesday night in Nakoni County, winning on debut in Hong Kong as well. Time to check out the meeting details for this week. Nine race program are on the B course, so the rail moves out slightly from last Wednesday night. 6.45 the first, the two races that we are going to focus on, races eight and nine, the class three over the thousand and the class three over 1800 metres. Race number eight has the runner. Now he carries the same weight as the win on the 16th of February being an extended rating ban. Valiant Dream is on the class drop but race best so far at Sha Tin. Atomic Force was trained by Kevin Ryan under the same name and over a thousand in the UK at Hamilton and 1200 uh, twice at Chanty in France. Nervous Witness gets the cross nose band on when a method has his first start since October. Man stars on the class drop but has raced best so far on the all weather. Mr Colourful is first up on the back of one trial. Pride of Eights, a newcomer, was Pride of Derry for Kieran Murphy and went over the 1465 at Roscommon and a happy sharing makes his Happy Valley debut. Pace here, uh, Nick, there's some talented types in show. Nervous Witness normally goes fast. Will he have the pace to lead here? Uh, John, I think he will. I'll be, I'll be somewhat shocked if he doesn't lead because we know how quick away he can be and he's drawn in gate three, so he's well berthed. Uh, to, to get himself to the front. Special M, obviously a horse that shows plenty of pace, knows his way around here. Uh, winner Method also, certainly not um, not short of pace, and he's drawn one, so he's in the ideal spot there, Paul, to, to get somewhere very close to the lead. Yeah, he won't be too far away, and Atomic Force has shown a little bit of pace in his trials. Now, the, the query, I suppose, Sunny Boy normally goes forward, but he's drawn wide, and if he starts to go forward, then where's he going to end up? He could be ended up. I don't think he, he's good enough to get there, but um, so I think he, they might just go back with him. I might play it safe with Sunny Boy and be towards the tail end in between horses. There's been some talk already on the show about Atomic Force. The man that knows him best since arriving in Hong Kong is Casper Founds, and this is what he told Nick via Zoom earlier today. Casper, Atomic Force is a fascinating newcomer to the racing scene here in Hong Kong. You're the man that's been charged with training him. Uh, what have you made of this smart two-year-old uh, from Europe? Yeah, he's a lovely horse, Nick. Um, he's still developing. Um, I'm surprised he's done what he's done because, uh, you know, he's still got a ways to grow and uh, um, he looks like a horse that's going to just keep improving into his three-year-old year. What have you made of his trials and his track work, Casper? Obviously, we know he's got that form uh, on paper, which we'll get to uh, shortly, but what have you made of him in regards to his homework leading up to his debut? Yeah, he's done everything right. Uh, a little bit aggressive in the trials, but uh, he just he wants to get on with it. Um, his last trial for me was was his best trial. He, he was a little bit more chilled out. And uh, yesterday we took him at the 1800 and put him through the gates and he was really good. Uh, so it's all just starting to come together. But as you know, these European horses, when they come to Hong Kong, most of them need a little bit of time. But this guy's got a big frame. He's developing into that frame and he could be quite an exciting prospect for the stable going forward. He certainly could be. I'm just talking of that aggression. I noticed that you've got a tongue tie on him for, for his first run here in Hong Kong. Just the, the thinking behind that, is that just to sort of harness what aggression he might have? Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, it's like anything, you know, it's different speeds in, in the UK over here in Hong Kong. Now we've, we've taken him to the Valley for his first run. The race looked good. I, it's a race I picked for him for a long time out. You know, it's an 85 to 60, so he, he just sneaks in there on a rating of 84. Uh, and and gives him his chance to to you know get to the races and see see what we're dealing with going forward. Obviously, you talk of his rating eighty four. He left the the UK with an official rating of one hundred and fourteen, so he's very highly rated. Obviously, a couple of wins in France, uh, the Prix de Bois, which he won by five lengths, and the the Prix Robert Papin, which he won at Group Two level. I 
dare say you've watched those replays, if not once, but twice and a couple more times. What have, what have you made of that form? I mean, he just the way he was winning those races was very impressive. Yeah, look, like I said, he's a lovely horse, and physically, when you see him tomorrow, you know you you really you, you'll take to him because he's he's there, and uh, like I said, he's keeps he, he's keeping on developing, which is for me as a trainer that's exciting because uh, you know we always have a starting point, but this type of horse, uh, I can just see that there's something to work with going forward. Yeah, excellent. Obviously, talking of working with uh, with horses going forward, a nice double on the weekend, uh, headlined by uh, Galaxy <clears throat> Witness. Um, he's come out of the race okay. He's come out of the race beautiful, yeah. He goes up to Chung Far again, and the plan will be to race him probably second week of uh, of April. Yeah, bring him back and run in a 1,400 again and just slowly progress him, get him through the ranks and uh, and see how we go with him. He's he's potentially a, a, a top-quality horse. Um, he's doing everything the right way. You know, he's just come out a little bit tardy from the gates on Sunday, but I think, you know, there were a couple of, a couple of issues in that race which might have just caused that, but I think, Going forward, he's going to be fine. He's understanding what his job is, and he's certainly uh, a force to be reckoned with for next season. There he is, a Casper Founds, Paul, on Atomic Force. He's had the full trial since arriving here in Hong Kong. He has picked a rather strong Class 3 to debut in, though. Yeah, that's just the query. I mean, uh, coming in on a rating of 84, which is towards the top of Class uh, 3, it's just a little tricky rating to come into. And, and as Casper said, sometimes these Europeans just need a little bit of time to acclimatise. He's got that really good two-year-old form in the in Europe. Look, I'm just going to watch him in this one, but look, he, look, if he wins, he wouldn't be too surprised, but I'm just a little bit, uh, just, just want to watch him in this race. We move on now to some of the other horses in this race, Nick, and we start with the runner, and this was a big win last time, never on the track, and gets in with 133 again. He does, and, and he's, he's fortuitous in the sense that this is a 60 to 85 race. It allows him that, that extra opportunity to run in, in this grade. So, look, for him, that's a good thing. It's obviously tougher racing against some of the horses he is, but it was a good win, and, well, he's had a great season, Paul. Yeah, he has, isn't he? A lot of pace in this race. Uh, here's a horse that does like to go towards forward. He might just be a little bit further back midfield, but from barrier six, he should get a nice run. So, look, he goes in for me for sure. Here is some of that pace, Paul. Nervous witness. This is last time at Happy Valley. Let up for home was run down by a couple of them in the home straight. Look, David Hayes has said that this horse has got so much ability, but the problem is he's a little bit keen. He does over race a little bit. Now, again, his last gallop uh, during the week, he was pulling in, uh, in that gallop as well. That's the little query I've got. Once the penny drops with him, I've got no doubt that he's, you know, he's a good horse, he, but he'd be a top line horse. But I don't know if it's just quite there yet. What about his trial, Nick? This is since that last start defeat. Yeah, Zach was back on board for this. Look, beats Master 8, so he's a Group 3 winner, so it's pretty good trials for him. And interestingly enough, I think with this horse, they do tend to keep the same rider on him as well, so he takes a little bit of knowing, as Paul alludes to. He's keen in his track work. They, they do their best to harness that. Look, he's not the finished product just yet, and I think when he does finally, the penny finally drops with him, we know he's going to be a very smart horse, and he's already shown us some good form already. But um, at the moment, he's just doing one or two little things wrong. He's man on board. Nick, there he is. 19 wins from his last 44 rides over the last five meetings at Happy Valley. Yeah, the majority of his winners this season have actually been around the valley, and obviously we, we, that's highlighted by five-timers, four-timers, trebles, and, you know, he's just riding extremely well, Paul. So, you know, if it ever pays to follow a jockey, especially at Happy Valley this season, it's, uh, it's Zed Purton. Yeah, let's have a look at his rides. Telecom cheetah for Dennis Yip. He didn't uh, miss the start in a recent trial. Wild West Wings in a, in a tough race, but Party Warrior, I think, can win. I think Joyful Mood can win. Peak to Peak's got the right draw. HK Dragon did everything but win last time. Uh, Nervous Witness, of course, and, and uh, Savvy Kingman, I think, is a big chance in the last. So, once again, he's got a strong book, as he normally does at Happy Valley. Indeed, it does look a lethal lineup for Zach Purton. Winner Method, Nick, he returns. Now, this is his last start. We're going back to what was actually his first start for the season because it was over his pet distance of 1,000. He failed a couple of times up in trip after this, and we haven't seen him since October. We haven't, and he's, he's done well at the trials also. He's won an all-weather trial. So um, it's his course and distance debut, as, as we can see from this piece of VT. Look, it was a, a good, strong race this day, and, uh, and he obviously prefers the straight at Chartin, but he is well drawn here. He has, isn't he? He's drawn barrier one. He's had surgery to a right hind splint bone. That was the reason why we haven't seen him so far. But, uh, look, I think he's a good chance for barrier one. Like Nervous Witness, Paul, he too has been back to the trials and he does race well fresh also. He does, doesn't he? And, look, coming here to Happy Valley for the first time, he's a horse that does race on the pace. So I think he'll be suited by the valley. Uh, he has trialled well in the past there as, as well. 
Uh, from barrier one, I think he could, he could sit just behind Nervous Witness. So I think he's a big danger to him. And look, I quite like the way he just finished off this trial and seems like that surgery's done, pretty, done him pretty well. It certainly does, doesn't it? Nice to see them come back as well in that sort of form because he's a, he's a smart type of horse and, and hopefully he can, uh, he can sort of go back to the, the good form we know, uh, we know he can produce. And the horse that he beat in that trial is the Golden Scenery, who definitely has a motor, as we've seen since his arrival in Hong Kong. So for you, Paul, win a method to roll Nervous Witness. Yeah, look, I just think uh, just, just, he's just going to get the perfect run just in behind uh, Nervous Witness. So that's, that's why I've sort of gone him on top. Look, Nervous Witness, if, if he relaxes, I think he could win by five, but he, we just haven't seen that at the moment. So that's why I've got win a method to beat him, six to beat five. Uh, the runner is very hard a horse to lead out. Um, he's very consistent. He's a last start winner as well. And look, the one I've put in just outside the square is Mr. Colourful. He's only had the three starts to date. He came to Happy Valley for the first time. His fifth behind Simply Fluke I thought was pretty good. From barrier five, I think he can sit off the pace as well. So wouldn't be surprised at a good showing from him. But ended up 6 5 1 and 10. Yeah, I'm going to go with Atomic Force in this one, actually. I know he's having his first run in what is a hot race here in Hong Kong, and it's not going to be easy, but. The fact that we heard from Casper there a few moments ago, and this was the race that he had targeted with this horse, given the nature of the rating band. He's rated 84, so he gets in. He's put a tongue tie on him just to help him out a little bit, and he's got that very good form. He's winning the, the Prix de Bois was, was very good by five lengths. He's winning the Robert Papin was, was very impressive at Group 2 level, so he's got some very good form, uh, and Casper obviously knows what it takes to, to get horses to win around the valley. So I like him here, and I'll go with him on top. Over Nervous Witness, who I still don't think is the finished product just yet, but he, he'll get there. Uh, he's just over racing a little bit at the moment, but uh, Zach going back on board and the cross nose band I think is going to be a plus. When a method goes in as well, hopefully he's back to his best form because he's a decent horse on his day and first run around here could be uh, could be interesting. And I've thrown uh, Special M uh, in as well. Like he may have done his winning for the season, but he's honest, he's consistent, uh, and he's drawn a gate three, five, six, and nine. And just before we go to the break, we'll give it a bit of time, Paul. Valiant Dream, frustrating horse at Happy Valley. We know he's fast and loves the straight track at Sha Tin, but. It just doesn't come across to the Valley, and he's on the down uh, grade as well. He's just out of form a little bit at the moment, isn't he, Valiant Dream? Um, we know he's a very speedy horse. I think he had the track record, that one stage or class record, down the straight 1,000 at Chartin. So he's, the pace is there. Uh, it just hasn't shown it recently, but um, uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Look, he's hard to have in this race. And Nick, the other first starter is Pride of Eight down the bottom, comes from uh, the UK as well, or Ireland actually, was Pride of Derry over there. What have you made of his trial since he's been in the country? Yeah, look, I thought his trial was only fair, to be honest. Um, his form probably as well needs to sort of uh, be elevated a little bit. He won on uh, sort of easier ground uh, when he did win for Kieran Murphy. So, um, look, uh, I'm interested to see him, go, see him run, but I couldn't find a spot for him. All right, there you have it. A detailed look at race number eight. Off to a break here on Racing to Win. We'll come back and have a look at the last, the ninth, right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. You are watching Racing to Win. We're about to preview race number nine. This is Hong Kong's twice weekly preview show. We start over the 1800 with race one and we finish over the 1800 with a class three. Savvy Kingman absolutely loves the trip. He carries an extra four pounds for that last start win. Apache Pass, he carries an extra seven pounds. He's won his last two, both on the all weather. Beauty Glory goes from the 1650 up to the 1800 metres. Exceptional nice, wears blinkers for the first time. King Torbian back to the 1850. He did win the group three rough habit plate at Doombin over the 2000 metres. Darcy Joy makes his Happy Valley in class three debut. Doctor winning second time in class three and smiling time. Hong Kong best last time and does wear the colours of smiling collector who won on debut at Sha Tin on Sunday. 1800 metres here, Nick. Savvy Kingman loves to lead in his races and just have a lovely run in front. And looking at the speed map, that may very well happen again here. Yeah, I think it could well do, actually, couldn't it? I mean, he's drawn, what, middle of the line in six, and we know he does have plenty of, uh, of early pace. There isn't a great deal uh, of additional early pace in the race. I mean, exceptional nice can go forward, but he, he probably prefers to take a bit of a sit. Uh, Beauty Glory, we've seen show a bit of pace, but last time out, was he very disappointing. It uh, was beaten a very long way. He'd need to certainly bounce back uh, from that. So they might obviously... Uh, try and press on with him as well. Apache Pass, uh, look, he's a handy sort of runner, Paul, but he's drawn 12, so that leaves him out on the wing a little bit. Yeah, because he's gone forward the last couple, and if he does want to go forward, I yeah, just don't know where he's going to quite end up. Um, ready player one generally gets back with King Torbian and uh, as well Smiling Tom. King Scapital both drawn wide, so they're likely to go to the back. All right, now we need to go and 
have a look at some replays. And we start with the Savvy Kingman last time here, Paul. And uh, this is him in front doing what he loves to do, rolling along over 1,800 metres, just upping the tempo from halfway or just inside halfway and giving nothing else a chance. Exceptional nice is extremely consistent and Senkon Senk couldn't back up the win from two starts prior to this race. Yeah, they let him go in front, Savvy Kingman and Zach just... Um Rode it a really good race, and the horse um, won really nicely. Just rated it perfectly. Look, he looks the only leader in it once again, and if, if they do leave him alone like this, there's no reason why he can't go and do it again. He's a horse that's in been a very good form at the moment. He just has to carry extra weight. I think that's probably the, the slight concern, if any, with him. I mean, he's got an additional four pounds to carry. Now, he did win a, a Class 4 with 133 pounds, but this is obviously a, you know, a different kettle of fish, if you will. So, look, it, he's a horse in form, hard to look past him. And, you know, as we've already touched upon, he's got plenty of pace. He likes to roll forward. And, well, the last twice he's been favourite, he's collected. So he's, he's a good horse to follow when the chips are down. He's a big horse too, so that will help with 133 pounds. So that was Savvy Kingman. Back to the all weather we go. Nick Apache Pass had been trialling really well for quite some time and just wasn't producing it on race day until two starts ago. This is last time. King's Capital is nor normally running on, and he does again here. And Smiling Time has been around on the turf. Was better, but still needs to improve further. Surface switch for Apache Pass. How do you think that's going to treat him? It's, it's a slight concern. I mean, the fact that he's got so used to racing on the dirt here in Hong Kong and he's, he's form figures uh, on that read, you know, for two wins and, uh, and a, you know, a, a non-placing. But his last two wins have been good. He's chased down the leader this day to, to go and take, uh, take the prize, beating true legend. So, look, he's been very good on the all-weather, but I do have a concern, Paul, coming back to the turf. Yeah, look, the, look at the stats. He's six zip at Xia Tun. He's ne never raced at... Happy Valley before, but look, his better form has been on the all weather, no doubt. The horse that King's Capital there, his form's on the turf isn't bad though as well, so he's first at all. He likes to get back and run on. Now we're going back to the 500 metre mark here, Paul, because this is Ready Player One, who, when we'll see in a moment and pick up the replay, you don't really want to be on him because he's hard at work, but the further they went, the better he looked. We've also got King Torbian, who, as mentioned earlier, has won over further in Australia. He's to the inside there and Baron Z, this was his first start and he was disappointing but he won over 2,000 metres ready player one. The 1,800 does look a, a big plus for him this week. It does. He's by done deal so uh, that's obviously out of a fast net rock mess. There's no problem with the distance as you say he's already done it overseas. Uh, look he was really under a lot of pressure here. He stayed on nicely enough. It was a nice run from him. He's going to have to do something similar. That was just a little query. There's a bit of money uh, for him uh, early to suggest that he can uh, run well. He didn't quite make it in for me, but look, 1,800 is his right trip, I think. Yeah, I, I got a spot for him. I just think the way he was running on here, look, they, if they went an extra 200 metres, he, he would have got rather close to them, wouldn't he? So, uh, yeah, look, he's an interesting horse. He's had to cover a bit of ground here. Obviously, he was never going to reel in the winner uh, under the circumstances, but... I think going up in trips a big plus, and um, as Mark alluded to, he's got some OK staying form in Australia. And uh, finally, Nick, we're going back to Sha Tin for this one. This is Darcy Joy. Now, he comes here for the first time to Happy Valley. He has had a trial up at Chung Fa following this run. He ran a fifth behind Easy Snip. It was a fairly quiet trial. He was such an unlucky horse, then all of a sudden the luck turned, and he has won three from his last five. Firstly, how do you think his style is going to suit Happy Valley, and can he make it one for one in Class 3? Well, the draw's probably not been overly kind. I mean, he's in he's in nine, but he actually managed to win from 13 around Shah in two starts ago. But obviously, as you said, a different track. Um, look, going up in grade is perhaps you know the concern for me. The fact that, you know he's a four-year-old. So look, if he was any older, you might really query it. But we've seen it recently with horses that have won at a lesser grade, in form, leading fortune, one of them, and he's gone on and won in a better a better grade next time. Yeah, look, since he's stepped up to the 1,800 metres was a, was a key too because he's now unbeaten two from two over the 18. So he does look like a star out of a high shepherd realm there. Uh, by Darcy Brummer, I, I think he'd be OK around the uh, track. OK enough to get him in your top four, Paul? Yeah, no, he, did, he does go in as a Quinella horse, in fact. Savvy Kingman, I think, is going to be out of trouble in front. I think he can lead all the way. Uh, Darcy Joy is the Quinella. Exceptional nice, you can't have on a win line, but you can have him on a place line easy enough. And King's Capital might be just the one, just to pay a bit of bit of money there, get back and run on late. One ten six and five. Yeah, I've gone with the top weight as well here, Savvy Kingman. I just feel that he's a horse racing too well to obviously not put on top. And um, Zach's ridden him just the once for the one win, and it was a, a good, uh, solid, easy win as well. So Savvy Kingman for me, over exceptional nice. He's got plenty of place for him. The, the winning is the hardest part for him, but uh, the blinkers are going on, and um, they might just spark him. 
uh, into life to try and get his head in front uh, for the first time. Ready player one goes in, like him up in trip, and I've thrown Darcy joying as, as well. It is tougher for him, but he's in very good form and he, he must be respected. One, six, eight and ten for me. Savvy king man all around. Wouldn't you like to get some of the 7.9 about him at the moment, Paul? Because I don't think he's going to start anywhere near that. No, I don't think he will, especially if Zank has some wins earlier on. Let's have a look at some of those uh, chances he's got here in the card. I do like it. Party Warrior was impressive. I think he'll come up pretty short, but I think he can win. Uh, Joyful Mood, another one of Zach Purden's mounts. So he's going well. Really like to see you again in race number three. I think he's just going to get the race run to suit as well. Horse got E-Legend in race seven. Uh, I think he's going to be a big value as well. So I think he can improve stepping up in the trip. And you can see a breakdown of all of those races on the website, hkjc.com. Click on audio and video for a race-by-race -race analysis. It's nearly the end of the show, Paul. You know what that means? It's time for a best, a long shot, and to play, please. I think Daniel Moore can get to see you again, homie. You should get the race run to suit. Just beaten last start at only a second start. It seems to like Happy Valley. And race seven, number five, E-Legend. The, the key here is up and trip, 1,200 to 1,650 by Dissident. And we'll do the play in his run race there with uh, Terrazard E-Legend. HK Dragon, QQP, 2, 5 and 6. Yeah, I've gone with Atomic Force, my best uh, here, newcomer. I think uh, Casper Founds' horses are racing extremely well, and this horse is quite classy. And the long shot, race 6, number 3, Common Room. Ran a, a mighty race last time. I think he can go well again. As far as the play is concerned, race 5 for me, 5, 6, 11 the numbers. Race number five, Joyful Mood is the best. Zach Purton rides for Manfred Man. One start for a third behind Regency Star. Tongue Tie goes on, draws nicely in two. Melbourne Hall comes back to uh, Happy Valley. He's drawn seven. He doesn't win out of turn, but races well there. And the play race six. Exponential and excellent peers do have a wide draw. And Melbourne Hall won 5 10 in a QQP. That's been Racing to Win, and we're back to Sha 10 on Saturday this week, Nick. We certainly are looking forward to some interesting newcomers. Yeah, and it uh, should be a good card at Happy Valley, and don't forget that jackpot. That has been Racing to Win. We'll see you for race number one on Wednesday night at Happy Valley at 6.45. Bye-bye.